So, uh, welcome. This is the uh, second last like real session. Uh, but as always, since this is next week, big reminder: uh, next week uh, we have guest speaker uh, Rom DePrisco coming in. He is a composer, sound designer. Uh, he is a professional. He's worked on a couple, a couple games you might have heard of, heard of like Fortnite. Uh, you might have heard of that one, uh, but he's also done the Guacamelee games. Uh, he's worked on Unreal Tournament, and a ridiculous amount of credits he has. Uh, and he's going to be coming in to talk about, uh, among other things, the creative process of uh, sound design and composing. So do not miss it. Tell everybody, tell your dog to get into that Google Meet uh, when it goes up. Um, but yeah. Mark it in your calendars next week, November 22nd, next week, next week. All right, so actually starting. <laughs> um, today we're going to be looking at uh, a bit more of the business side of being a composer, sound designer, voiceover artist, all that good stuff. Um, and through that, we're going to be talking about demo reels. Um, they're a pretty important piece of securing the first gigs. Um, and they are integral for a complete portfolio. Uh, apologies in advance for the astounding lack of pictures, but as always, um, it's kind of hard to visualize music and sound and stuff, but there are two pictures in the entire session, so <laughs> yeah, just try to, try to focus if you can, if you want. Um, and apologies if I'm like kind of scatterbrained. Halo was announced to come out today, so my brain is elsewhere. Alright, so what is a demo reel? Um, essentially, uh, they are a way for employers to have like a montage of all your work um, and a showcase of your skills to see why exactly they should hire you. Um, and this is something that's usually a super professional uh, representation of the work. Um, so like a nice uh, nice presentation, nice, like, smooth transitions between everything, the highest quality that you have. Um, like, it's, this is basically just where you want to put your best foot forward, um, because this is what the employers will see, and that's how they'll hire you. Um, so yeah, they're used for uh, hiring, but they're also used for self-promotion. Um, so let's say somebody isn't even looking for something you could be like oh here's my demo reel let me know um let me know if you have a open position if you like it and then they'll listen to it they'll be like wow this car guy's terrible and then they won't know okay let's not email this guy or hey this guy's sick let's email him um and yeah so promotion hiring both of those things and it's just good to have on your website either way uh, and they can be created for pretty much anything. So uh, the big three things are sound design, music, and voiceover, like I'm always talking about here. Uh, but the other, uh, the other one that does come up is a middleware implementation demo reel, which we will get to. Um, and yeah, let's hop right into just some general things to consider. Um, so here's just some considerations that go across all of the different disciplines uh, just before we hop into uh, specific types of demo reels. Um, so probably the biggest one, no matter what, always just try to aim to have the best quality possible. Um, and that's for sound um, as well as the actual content. Um, so like the resolution and the bit depth of the files, they should be really high quality, but the actual sounds themselves you don't want to, sorry Anthony, but you don't want to put a microwave sound in this unless that's what you're going for. Um, <laughs> and yeah, basically if you cut corners here, um, it won't show off your best work and therefore A, won't guarantee you as many jobs as it would otherwise, but B, it'll show the employer that this person is willing to cut corners of quality, which isn't exactly a... Uh, good trait to see in someone you want to hire. Um, so listen back to it as many times as you can on as many different devices as you can and systems to ensure that it's really mixed well. Um, and while that is a practice you should be doing for like music and sound anyways, 
uh, for a demo reel, it really is integral because for one thing, you don't know what they're going to be listening to it back on, whether it's like through their phone speakers or through like a big like theater setup or something. So no matter what, you've got to make sure it sounds good. Um, so this is where you show off your best work, like I said. Um, so try to lead with your best work. So stick that right at the beginning. Um, but at the same time, show off your versatility and not just how you are or how good you are at one specific thing. Um, so if possible, if you want to put in the work, consider having multiple demo reels that are specific uh, to different things along, along with a uh, general reel that has more so of a bit of everything. Um, but once again, everything you show should sail clear over your bar for quality. Um, and one subpar element can really drag down the whole thing, even if it's literally the last thing you hear. Um, so yeah, lead with your best thing and try to be versatile if you want. And multiple demo reels can really help with that. Um, and along with different demo reels, having uh, videos can actually really help with the presentation. Um, and you can also use them as a part of the actual demo. So like taking a gameplay clip, muting the audio, and then overlaying your own stuff, um, whether it's music, sound, or voice. Uh, it's a great way to show off what you can do with an actual game scene. Um, and videos are pretty much integral to a, uh, um, a middleware implementation reel as well. Um, and one thing that uh, some companies do are called speculative demos, uh, which are essentially a demo reel that is done um, by the prospective composer, and usually it's a bunch of different composers, um, specifically just to see, um, or it allows the developers to gauge how close each composer fits their vision uh, without fully committing to hiring one of them. Uh, and the reason I do say be careful with these is that they can often uh, lead to getting taken advantage of, um, from what I've read. So if you're in the position that you're doing one of these, either try to get paid for the work you do or keep the rights to it if you're not hired on. Um, and also, absolutely do not or try not to spend too much time on these, especially if you're doing it for free, because these can take a while to produce. Um, and they should because you really want them to hire you, obviously. Um, but if you're doing it for free and you're putting a lot of time into it, that's time that could be putting into other stuff that could actually get you money. And lastly, but um, arguably most importantly, uh, it can be tempting to put things in chronological order, but honestly, just don't. <laughs> um, like I said, you got to lead with your best stuff, and for it to flow properly, it's kind of hard to do that in chronological order. Um, and along with that, uh, do not repeat things uh, in your demo reel to pad out the length. Um, just cause they'll notice, like, let's be real. They'll hear it, whether it's a sound effect or a music clip. And then if they hear it again, they're going to be like, Oh, that's the same thing. They're reusing stuff. This feels cheap. All right. So with the general things out of the way, let's hop right into, uh, music specifically. Um, so this is where you show off your composing chops, your engineering chops, uh, recording, all that good stuff. All right. So, um, as you'd expect, this is where you're showing off your music uh, for a specific project or a variety of projects, um, just to show off what you can do. Um, and as tempting as it is to show off everything you can do, you gotta cap it somewhere, uh, and seven minutes is pretty uh, safe from what I've seen. Um, a bunch of them that I've seen usually fall around five minutes, um, and with this admittedly really short time frame, you're going to want to use 30 second to 90 second uh, selections of tracks, um, whatever is long enough to still have a strong impact on the listener and convey the message you want. Um, and one more time limit on top of all that, uh, you're going to want to put your best for best work in the first like two minutes because um, people are impatient, especially when they have dozens of resumes and demos to get through. So coming out of the gate, to just punch them right in the face and tell them to listen to you, that's a really good idea. Um, just don't maybe not physically punch them in the face. I don't think that would work well for hiring managers. 
Uh, so, in addition to the musical punch in the face, uh, they should each have an impact um, in regards to the musical diversity uh, as well. So, whether you're going for a specific genre demo um, that can show off div or versatility in that one style, uh, or more of a general one that showcases your EDM beats and then immediately transitions to like a large orchestral, like or a piano ballad or something. Everything should be there for a reason, and it should be in service of and to showcase what you're capable of. Uh, when it comes to actually delivering it, you can go one of two ways. Um, one way is to get one single cut of everything, so just one big file. Um, with all the tracks blending together and transitioning smoothly for the listener. Um, and alternatively, you can have individual files that are all just snippets of a full track, and then you just stick them all in a zip folder for easy access. Um, but either way, you should be very clear about the different tracks you used and when they play. Um, so, just for an example of both of these, uh, on the right you can see here, uh, David Levy, one of the uh, composers for Doom Eternal's Ancient Gods DLC, great music, uh, released a score reel earlier this month. It was like, yeah, November 2nd, um, it says in the picture. Um, he uploaded that to his YouTube channel, and in it, he showcases some of the harder-hitting tracks uh, that he worked on in the game in like full, uncompressed glory. Um, right, and that is something I forgot to touch on. In these, don't use game rips. Use like the fullest, highest quality versions of these tracks that you can. Um, because if you're using the one that's in the game, chances are you're going to want that compressed a bit more um, just to fit within a certain frequency range, so it's a certain file size. Whatever you're doing to it, uh, just having the biggest and highest resolution one for the actual reel, you got to do that. Um, so in... Uh, David Levy's reel. He does have uh, just a screenshot of just some art of the game, uh, the title of the track, um, and then he plays like 30 to 45 second selections from a bunch of tracks, and he just simply crossfades it into the next track after, um, after a bit of listening to it. And yes, the cat headbanging is actually in the video, and it's absolutely well deserved because those tracks are bangers. Um, but that's a great example of just having one big track and an example of using video to your advantage. Um, and on the flip side of that, using individual tracks, um, Shocker, Rom DePrisco, reminder that he's coming next week, November 22nd, Monday, next week, uh, he has a playlist on his website um, that's embedded with each of the tracks, um, just like a huge list. It's like 40 tracks or something like that. It's kind of insane. Um as well as a zip file for download, um, just to check his stuff out. So he went the route of here's like one genre, here's another genre, and just a big list of just a ton of different things he's worked on. Um, since, like I said, his catalog is just insane. Um, so going that route as well, it's a great idea. Uh, and each of them, each of the tracks is labeled correctly, so you know exactly what it is when you click on it. All right. Music out of the way, let's get into sound effects. And um, as you'd expect, with the music one just being music, you're going to want no uh, music or voiceover in this one at all, um, since the focus is purely on sound effects. Um, I just realized I did a less than three, which is like a heart. That's cute. Um, but you're going to want to keep this under three minutes long, uh, preferably around like two-ish. Um, and I'd recommend doing like 15 to 30 second scenes of just varying intensity just to keep the listening experience dynamic and uh, a bit more exciting to listen to. Um, so creating scenes, uh, you're going to want to use a lot of panning for that and a lot of effects to really flesh out the space that the scene is taking place in. Um, so like uh, by effects, I mean like if something's far away, you use a low pass filter to like cut off all the high end because um, lower frequencies travel further um, and faster. Uh, and then you got reverb to really show the distance or if something like zooms by you like a car or something, you can use the Doppler effect and you can pan it uh, from one ear to the other to show like, ooh, look at that, it zoomed by you. 
uh so immersive um but talking about halo already um halo infinite uh in <laughs> i still can't believe that came out anyways uh in march this year uh they dropped a news update which was purely focused on the sound of the game um and in that they released a uh, sound effects montage that was like three minutes of just pure awesome sound design and um just showcasing their talents basically um for the audio of this game uh so looking at that for an example is really excellent like it's purely just one big three minute wave file and you hear like explosions projectiles like whizzing by you um you hear like fires you hear like footsteps everything you can think of it's in there and it sounds amazing uh so definitely look look into that if you're curious about this um but there is another route you can go here uh you can make a video for it or you can include visuals um which one really good way to do that is to redesign audio for game clips trailers um cutscenes even movie scenes if you want to um anything really that is a visual you can just mute it and then slap your own sound on there um but you really got to make sure that you remove absolutely everything that you didn't do um this is a fairly common way to show off your skills and uh this is actually something that you're gonna need to do in second year in game sound um so keep this in mind um but basically it's popular because it's a great way to test your skills as well as showcase uh, what you can do with sound design um but one point i kind of skipped over here don't forget ambience and room tone because the things that are off screen make noise too if a tree is behind you and it falls you still hear it um so if there's something behind the character that isn't in the video but let's say they there's a grenade on the ground and they run past it and it blows up you should include that because it happened um so that's sound effects and now voiceover so this is where um you show off a bit what you can do with your throat and your voice uh this one is significantly shorter than both of them uh you should keep it around like 60 to 90 seconds that sort of range um with sections that are made up of like 15 to 20 seconds uh of like a couple sentences or a few phrases or something um and as you'd expect no music or sound effects in here but you could use um effects on the voice if you wanted to achieve a bit more of a unique demo uh but if you do go that route i would also recommend including the raw file or like doing an a b comparison just to show like yeah this is what i did and with a couple of effects this is what it sounds like um so multiple demos can help uh, because just like with music, you want to show off your range. Um, so if you could do a bunch of different characters or like a creature, for example, absolutely just send it. Um, and this way you'll have options in case somebody wants um, a bison or something, uh, for example. Uh, and then boom, super helpful addition to market yourself with. Um, and one of the key things you got to really make sure you do is that you um, remain articulate and be really emotive and expressive with your voice, but also very clear. Um, so something I kind of struggle with, especially here, is uh, just being articulate with what I'm saying because I don't breathe in very often. So for this kind of thing, since you're you know kind of crafting it, um, and taking your time with it, you got to make sure you always use the best cuts of everything and make sure you're really just articulating and being very clear about every word. Um, and with that as well, you got to make sure that you're doing it in like a treated room or even like a closet, um, just a space that you can, that you can use, um, to cut out everything except for your voice, um, because, you know, like recording in a stairwell and having a bunch of reverb and not a crispy, just a super clean voice, um, it can come off as pretty sloppy and unprofessional. So just make sure it's something that you'd be happy with putting in a game. Um, but again, that goes for all of these. Uh, and one last thing, 
make sure you leave uh brief pauses between the tracks in this case um because like in the case of music you want to blend it together so it's just one seamless experience sound effects same thing you want to blend it together make sure it's all smooth but with voiceover if you end a sentence and then before the person even has the time to breathe in you're starting another one um that doesn't feel organic and it can also not signal uh very clearly that hey this uh phrase or this section is actually done and we're on a new one um so just leave like four or five seconds in between each track so like a couple sentences wait four or five seconds and then the next one that is um really beneficial to the experience all right so now the uh now a bit of the weird one kind of like the red-headed stepchild of the of the demo reels but it's very specific to games so obviously we care about it and it is very important to us um so it can be called the middleware demo reel it can be called an implementation demo reel a technical demo reel um and this is where you show off to employers that you can not only do the actual audio stuff but that you're knowledgeable about implementation um practices as well which is something that is looked at and considered when um especially indie devs are looking for audio people so with this this sort of thing like i said it can be called many things middleware uh implementation or a technical demo reel so at the end of the day this is just going to showcase what you can do uh with middleware um so most i've seen fall under 10 minutes in length so it's not a lot of time to cover everything but it should be an edited video uh, just to cut down on the length and bloat wherever possible. Um, and the sweet spot is around like three to seven minutes, I found. Um, so like hitting five minute mark, pretty decent. Um, and this, like I said, is where you show off how you implemented everything uh, for a game. So like you're going to want to show off your adaptive music systems, like how uh, different triggers in the world change the music. Um, you're going to want to show off your dynamic sound effects. So like whether ambience changes, footsteps, um, sounds that change based on like distance or other parameters, you're going to want to show that off. Um, and kind of in addition to that, you're going to want to show off like modulation, automation and parameter work, um, which I talked about, uh, not last week, but two weeks ago at the previous session, um, just on the basics of FMOD. Um, so in case you weren't there or just need a refresher, modulation, that's stuff that happens regardless of any effects. So you hit play, it goes through um, the modulation, and then when you hit stop, it stops the modulation and stops the sound. Automation, that's stuff that when you play it, you can control it using parameters, you can control it using um, just like charts, or not charts, curves that you actually apply in the fmod editor and then parameters that's what controls pretty much any option you want um so using those and really implementing them into dynamic sound effects can show off hey this person doesn't just have a root understanding they really know what they're doing here um last but not least what you want to show off is your mixing work um because bad mixes they're not good obviously it's in the word bad um, but mixing for games is particularly hard, as I've talked about multiple times, um, just because there's so many things at play at all times, and you never know what's happening when. Um, so if you do have any interesting mixing work, like a sidechain compressor, compressor on the music, um, which I've talked about a couple times, like at the previous session and the one before that, um, even just something like that can show like, hey, you're being mindful of the entire soundscape and not just you're really good at making sounds and you know how to implement them. Like you know how to make them work as well and kind of hold the whole thing together. Um, an in-game example as well uh, is pretty ideal for showing how it works. Um, so that would just be like recording or screen recording your actual game uh, with the FMOD window open and showing off, okay, this is what it does. And then, boom, this is when it's queued, or just playing a clip and then having an on-screen indication like, hey, this changed. Um, but if you don't want to do that, the next best thing 
uh, would be showing off an in-game example through the use of the sandbox window uh, within FMOD Studio, which allows you to create scenes and then play different things um, to basically simulate the in-game scene. Um, so I definitely do want to make a session just about the sandbox window, but I, to be completely honest, I haven't really looked at it. So that's a next semester thing. Um, and uh, just a couple more things here. Uh, showing off how you implemented everything is one thing, but actually walking through the steps um, of how you did it is also a great help to show off that you really do know what you're doing. And at the same time, it'll help out students in game dev programs that want to learn and search up demo reels to learn things. Um, so pro tip there, just a hidden pro tip, look up demo reels, especially um, and particularly the implementation demo reels. You'll be surprised at really just how much you'll learn and how many ex explanations there are out there. Um, so showing off like doing a step-by-step -step, like okay this is what I did and then I applied this to it and then there's this effect and this does this just going through each step of the process can really show your expertise in it um, and just the last thing it's a generally a pretty good practice to make a new demo reel every year or so uh, but for the implementation demo reels uh, since they're a little bit different from the rest chances are high um, that this demo is going to be directly showing a project that you have worked on um, or are currently working on. So use this to your advantage because uh, all you really got to do in this case is just record a video of how it works and boom, free demo reel for your, um, for your promotional materials or whatever you're using it for. Um, so yeah, like every new project, you could make a new demo reel. You could show off, cool, this is how I did the music, sounds, voice, awesome. Next project same thing. Um, so now we've covered the four that I brought up at the beginning, but um, is there even anything else that could be covered by a demo reel? The answer is absolutely and of course, um, but mainly process demos, which I was kind of alluding to in the in the previous section or slide. Um, and the beauty of process demos is that they can cover pretty much anything else um, that we haven't talked about already in a staggering amount of detail. So this is where you'd talk about uh, your workflow, uh, tips that you've picked up, that sort of thing. Um, these can be for composition, mixing, mastering, production, prototyping, sound design, voiceover, literally anything you do. Um, and when I've looked into this, I've seen some as short as five minutes, and I've seen some that are as long as an hour or two. Um, and that's really the beauty of these, is that since they're not exactly demo reels, um, but more so like an educational material, um, they're an excellent showcase of your ability either way, um, but don't really have that strict uh, strictness of somebody who's trying to get through a bunch of these. Um, so if you have a video that's educationally driven to show your process in how you work um, and prospective employers are interested, they can take a look at your YouTube channel, see a bunch of these, or your website and see like a big blog of your work. Because um, that's another thing, this doesn't need to be a video or audio, this could be purely just words if you want to write it. Um, but employers seeing this, that's a big thumbs up in their book, so definitely look into these. Um, and another technique or another unique way that these could be, uh, utilized is to show your process with, um, recording since that's often forgotten in lieu of the editing and implementing parts. Um, but it is arguably the most important part of the process since if you start with a bad recording, there's only so much you can do to make it good. Um, so showing off that you know what you're doing when it comes to being a recording engineer as well as an editor. Um, as well as everything else, is big ups to you, particularly for instrumental recording, um, as there are courses and programs that just go into mic things properly, um, or like how to mic things properly. Um, so if you have the resources and the time to learn all that stuff and need a, another really solid sol selling point, I'm running out of air, uh, it's definitely worth picking up that knowledge and showing it off. 
uh, with Foley and sound or field recording as well, uh, since it's such an interesting side that we don't often see, uh, this could show off that, hey, you're passionate about literally every aspect of this. You're down to drive to the middle of nowhere and sit down with a mic for 30 minutes to record some stuff. Um, and as I've kind of alluded to with the past few things, uh, having tutorials and educational content, like strictly educational content, um, again, since they're, they're not strictly demo reels, but they do show off that you know your stuff fairly confidently, which at the end of the day is the point of a demo reel. Um, so that's why I'm including it in here. Um, like take Brackies for instance, uh, a huge example, but that's kind of the point of this. Uh, like if you were to apply for a job that required Unity experience, um, literally all they would have to do is look at the fact that he'd run a YouTube channel on it uh, for years, and he would be set. Like I could almost guarantee that he would have that. Uh, so same idea here. If you make tutorials, if you do like that sort of thing, that can show off like, hey, this person kind of knows what they're talking about. This could help out um, with actually getting a job and now with uh, process demos all the other demo reels out of the way um, let's get back to just strictly the demo reel stuff and let's talk about the presentation of what to include with it um, so yeah like I said just wrapping up here um, this is where you put a little bow on the demo reel um, so first things first, you're going to want to put your contact information somewhere. Um, so like if it's a YouTube video, slap it in the description, slap your name in the video. <coughs> <coughs> wow, I don't know what just happened. Sorry, uh, just yeah, just give me a sec. Carter a minute <laughs> to uh, recuperate from his uh, sudden um, Death. disruption. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> it was snowing cool. pretty hard for a solid two minutes. Wow. Yeah, it was just kind of raining up here. Oh, it was full on blizzard for like a couple of, couple of minutes. You good? I, I think so, yeah. I've been I've been resurrected. You got some you got some water? You got some of that good good, yeah. Okay, okay. Great, this means I'm gonna have you know what? No, I'm not editing it. That's that's staying on. Hi YouTube. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh where right, yeah. Contact information. Sorry about that. Uh I am good. I'm just a little sweaty right now. Um I couldn't breathe that whole thing um but yeah if you have like a youtube video you're gonna want to put your name in the video uh all your links in the description um like a link to your website link to your linkedin uh uh email all that good stuff you gotta want people to get in contact with you um so just include it everywhere even if it's like on your soundcloud or something even if it's on your personal website like a portfolio still have like your email there just be like hey if you're interested go to the contact me page and uh spam me or something that sort of thing um next most important thing uh is a cue sheet so this would include uh the title of every track where it appears on the reel um and where it appears in uh what body of work you made uh and what it was used for and more if you want to include that. Uh, right at the bottom, I included an example of a cue sheet. Um, basically, just on the left column, that would be a number from 1 to whatever, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that sort of thing. And then the title, exactly what it says. It's the title of the cue. Um, and then where it's used, when it comes in, when it goes out, and the length of it. Uh, so that way people can know, okay, this is where, this is what that sound is. Uh, so this is particularly important in sound effect uh, demo reels if you really want to be super thorough with everything that you use, um, which is probably the best thing. Um, but that way it just shows, hey, this is all of the stuff I used 
it's a very dense thing, and then they'll be like, ooh, that's a lot of sounds. This person's done a lot. That's really cool. I'm going to hire them, uh, which is good. We like getting hired. Um, so uh, along with contact information and cue sheet, similarly to the contact information, you're going to want to put this everywhere. Um, so the more places they are, the more potential avenues you have for actually being discovered. Um, so that's places like LinkedIn. You can put things, uh, you can actually put things on LinkedIn as like a showcase. Um, I think it's called, uh, you can do, you can throw it on SoundCloud, uh, feature it on your profile. Um, YouTube is a great example of a platform that you can just put all of it on, which is great. Uh, you can embed it and host it on your portfolio website, um, like Rom's doing with a lot of his stuff, uh, and really anything you, anywhere you think. Um, like even Twitter, if you put it on Twitter, then you could just pin it, and then boom, it's on your profile. Um, now let's talk about audio formats, since this is the big one. Um, I know I was really harping on about quality. But something to really consider would be a compressed version and an uncompressed version. Um, uncompressed one being like super high res um, and just like crazy, crazy good version. But in reality, a compressed version at a pretty high quality, so like 256 kilobits per second or higher. Um, honestly, that's more than enough most of the time. Um, but the reason I bring up both is because Rom DePrisco, once again reminding you that he's going to be coming about five minutes before I remind you again. Um, on his website for his demos, he offers uh, demos or he offers downloads uh, for both MP3 versions and uh, uncompressed FLAC versions of all of his music demos. Um, and myself falling headfirst down this high quality sound rabbit hole. Um, I'm personally going to follow this example, and I would suggest that you guys maybe think about it as well. Um, although, I do acknowledge once again that chances are high that if it's good and properly mixed and mastered, a uh, high-quality MP3 will do the trick at the end of the day. Um, but if you are going the uncompressed route, um, the absolute minimum I would say to go for would be uh, CD quality. Uh, so that's 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and 16 bits, um, but what I would personally go for is like 48 kilohertz or even 96 kilohertz and uh, probably 24 bits just to get the absolute most out of every single file that you can. And I have died during this session. I have talked about demo reels. I have said the word demo reel about 4,000 times. And I'm going to say Rom DePrisco's name one more time because this session is done. And next week, he is coming out. Last session of the year. It is being capped off by a guest appearance by brilliant sound composer, sound designer, um, music composer, um, music designer, I guess, at this point. Um, as well as sometimes professor here, Rom DePrisco. He's sharing his wisdom that he's built off, built up from many years in the industry, uh, lots of experience, lots of wisdom he's got. Make sure you come out. It, you will not want to miss it. It's going to be a great time. And yeah, thanks for coming out. Uh, I hope my coughing didn't give anyone a certain disease. <laughs>